What is going on everybody? I am currently heading to the Ann Arbor Supercharger and I thought I might as well bring you along. Uh, I actually did not plug in my car last night because I'm doing some testing with um, how much electricity it's using, but that left me with a really low amount of miles. Now, I could have easily gotten home, don't get me wrong. Um, Autopilot is doing all of this, by the way. Uh, I could have easily gotten home, but I was gonna get home with like 19%, and I figure the supercharger is close enough to work that I can go on my lunch and get some extra miles, and since they're free, you know, that kind of helps me out, I wanted to do that. But one of the things with supercharging in the winter when it's cold is it's slower. Now you can see here, my car says preconditioning battery for supercharging. So the car is warming the battery, getting it ready to supercharge. Now you can charge a battery when it's cold. Uh, battery don't care, if you give it energy, it's gonna charge, but you'll damage the battery. That's the problem with charging in the cold. Sorry, I'm just making sure the car is doing everything correctly. Um, the problem with here, let me show you what's going on. Uh, okay, so that's a little, little rude, but all right, let's speed up. Uh, so the problem with charging in the cold is it'll damage the battery. And like I said, the battery will take a charge. Battery doesn't care, but the, that's where the BMS com comes in, the battery management system or bat battery management software. And that's going to stop your charge from happening um, when the battery isn't ready to accept it or it's gonna slow the charge to keep the battery safe. Um, so let's head over there and we'll see how slow this really is. I did precondition the car for maybe 10 minutes before I drove or something like that. You can see I have the heat pretty high. Um, again, just cause I know I'm gonna charge, so I don't care about using a little more energy. And that also does help warm the battery. But I think with this preconditioning battery message, there's really not much I can do to make it any better. The battery is gonna do everything it can to be prepared to take as much charge as possible. So, we should be there in a few minutes and we'll plug in and see how slow the charge really is. Wow, there's actually four people charging there right now. Well, that's not good. That means we'll get the slower charging rate. Uh, hopefully somebody will finish up and we'll get our full charging rate. But you know, if they're close to full, then it, it won't be slow. Okay, so it looks like there's actually only two people charging. So that just hadn't updated yet. So we can go ahead and take the last stall here. Okay, oh. I can just hold my mic, I guess. So we are starting to charge and I will up my limit because I don't need a limit here. And let's see how many kilowatts we can get. So, so far this is already great. I have no problem with this, even if it stops here at 100. I mean, that's still really, really fast. Our max here is 150 kilowatts. This is an updated version two supercharger. And bam, 135, um, that's that's pretty much full, I would consider it. I usually don't see much above 140. It's pretty rare for me to see any more than 140. So um, seeing 138, I mean, the preconditioning, my drive here, only took about 10 minutes um, and I'm getting pretty much the full rate. So the preconditioning works really well. Like I said, I did maybe 10 minutes of conditioning the cabin at uh, 75 Fahrenheit before I started driving. And then the battery got to condition itself for maybe let's say 13 minutes. Um, I think there was a little more traffic. So there was a little more time than estimated and we got to drive on the highway going pretty fast. Um, so this is great. I was a little worried that, you know, the winter, the coldness, it's, it's 32 F out, but, uh, this morning it was, you know, closer to 20. It was a little below 20 Fahrenheit. Um, so I thought the battery might be really cold, but no, this is really good. There's no problem here. If this was a road trip or something, uh, this would be great. So I'm happy to see this.
Okay, well I need to head back to work soon, so let's check out our final stats here. We're at 218 miles, we started, I don't remember, I'll put the exact info on the screen, but we started around 70 miles charging. We got here about 12.20, so it's been 24 minutes. So that's about 150 miles we gained, and it cost us 6.75 divided by 150 is 4.3 or 4.4 cents per mile. So that's a really good cost. Now my supercharging is free, but that's what it would cost if I didn't have any free supercharging miles. So this is pretty good. I gotta say, I actually kind of enjoy supercharging. I don't know if that's because I almost never do it, um, but it's weird. Even though I wasn't using any entertainment features on the screen because I was recording the charging the whole time, I was just using my phone. I really didn't mind sitting here. So um, this worked really well in the winter, um, at least in this particular scenario. This is fine. This is no problem, especially now with the car's newish. I mean, it's been here for a few versions, but newish ability to preheat before it gets to the supercharger. Let me know your supercharging experiences down below. And if I'm crazy for enjoying supercharging, <laughs> maybe that's weird, but I don't know. I'm being honest. So I hope you learned something here and let me know your winter supercharging experiences below. Welcome to the end of the video. If you're new here and you probably are because over 80% of my viewers are not subscribed. This is where I answer a question from you. So today's question comes from Snowman Mike. Would it be worth it for you to get solar panels and a battery? Could you do an estimate of how much you would save per year? Like if it cost you 300 a month for your house and car, with solar panels you save 150, and it cost you 15k for your battery and panels, would it be worth it? Maybe with tax credits. This is a great question, and of course, when you have an electric car, one of the first things you think of is getting solar for your house. I actually did get an estimate for solar, and maybe I should make an entire video about this, but since you're watching, I will share it with you. Here is my estimate from Solar King, a local installer here in Michigan. Now, I did get this quote before I got my Tesla, but uh, I asked them to assume that I had an electric car and to add a little bit on there. So this won't be perfectly accurate, but it should still be pretty close. Estimated average monthly electric bill, $150. Now that does cover uh, my residential. That is pretty true. But when you include the geothermal, it is actually closer to maybe $250. Calculated annual kilowatt hours used. You can see here about 10,000. Again, it's a lot more than that now. Cost of electricity, 16 cents. That's pretty accurate. Uh, it's actually, again, going to be less than that because I have different rates now. Um, but overall, this is close enough. At least it's some type of estimate. So if you look down in this section, percent of bill reduced, 106%. So they've basically eliminated my electric bill for me. And in Michigan, you do get to sell your electricity back. So in the summer, when I make more than I use, I can sell that back. And in the winter, when I'm not getting enough sun, I can then use those credits from the summer to cover what I'm not producing in the winter. So anyway, their estimated annual savings is about $1,700. And over 25 years, they estimate I'm going to save around $100,000. And I would guess that this is pretty accurate. And actually, it's probably better now. The overall cost of the solar after tax incentives would be about $15,000. Now, when you see this, it's kind of like, wait a second, you're going to make $100,000 by spending $15,000. That's like, duh, no brainer. And, you know, it kind of is, but there's a lot that goes into it. First of all, I don't have $15,000 sitting around ready for me to buy solar. And while, yes, I can get a loan to cover my solar cost, I really don't like debt, like I've said in other videos. So you also have to think of, like, the opportunity cost of that money. I, right now, am not willing to give away $15,000 for those future profits. Maybe in a few years, I can save up and do half of it as a down payment or maybe pay for all of it all at once. For me personally, I would feel a lot more comfortable in that circumstance going with solar. Um, but beyond that, it's not something I'm ready to do quite yet. But yes, eventually, I hope to get solar. Now for the second part of your question, the battery. Uh, it would be great to have a battery, especially since I now use a generator and I do lose power sometimes. But unfortunately, when you get one of these big batteries or two, if you want, it kills all profitability on your solar system. And it normally makes it so your solar system won't make you any money or instead of a seven to eight year payoff, like I'm seeing with my quote, it turns into more of a 10 to 15 year payoff. And then again, you're looking at that opportunity cost of your money being locked away in the solar. If everything went perfectly, yeah, solar's a no brainer, but you just kind of can't predict the future and you may regret having given all that money away in the past one day. All right, well, I hope that was interesting. If you'd like to see a video uh, more about my solar quote, maybe I can get a new quote and see what they say. Uh, let me know. I'd love to do that. That would be a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed this one and you will see me in the next video.